What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be continuing the series where we break down the stats of the Cold War weapons in Warzone, since they're so different from multiplayer. And in today's video, we're going to be comparing the two semi-automatic tactical rifles that we have, which are the DMR-14 and the Type 63. Now, as I'm sure all of you are aware, if you've played Warzone recently, the DMR-14 has become sort of that big go-to gun that is dominating everything right now, but I still wanted to compare these so you guys have the stats for both of them. And let's just kick it off with damage. Our base damage with the DMR-14 is 55, and with the Type 63, it's 60, so you deal a bit more damage with the Type 63. Also, with both of these, we do get an upper torso multiplier, and with this, for the DMR-14, our upper torso damage is 60, whereas with the Type 63, it's 72, so we actually get a pretty decent jump there with the Type 63. And let's have a look to see what that means for how many shots it's going to take to kill to the upper torso with various amounts of armor plates equipped on the enemy player. So without any armor plates, both of these are going to be a two-shot kill to the upper torso, or even anywhere in the body, really. It's going to be a two-shot kill. Then with one armor plate, both of these will be a three-shot kill to the upper torso. With two armor plates, now the Type 63 is going to be killing in three shots, whereas the DMR is going to take one extra shot. And we actually see that same trend when the enemy has full health and full armor equipped. With the DMR-14, it's going to take you five shots to the upper torso to get a kill, Whereas the Type 63 is only going to be 4 shots, and it's worth noting, it'll still be 4 shots if you land 2 of your shots to the upper torso and 2 to the lower torso, for instance. You're still going to get that 4 shot kill with the Type 63. So when it comes to damage to the body, there's definitely something to be said for the Type 63 over the DMR-14. It's going to take you one less shot to kill when the enemy has full armor plates equipped. However, the key with these guns is more so their headshots. So let's have a look at that, and as you can see here, with both of these guns, we have a flat headshot damage of 175, which is huge for a gun that uses assault rifle ammo in this game. And what this means is, if the enemy has no armor plates or one armor plate equipped, it's going to take just one headshot to kill with both of these guns. And then anything more than one armor plate equipped, it's going to take you two headshots to kill. So considering these guns use assault rifle ammo, this is a massive amount of damage that they're dealing, but now let's move on to rate of fire and damage per second as well as time to kill. And our base rate of fire with the DMR-14 is 400 rounds per minute, and the Type 63 is a little bit slower at 361 rounds per minute. What this means is our DPS to the upper torso with the DMR-14 is 400, whereas the Type 63 actually has a higher DPS value even though it has a lower fire rate just because it deals more damage, and this is 433. And when we take that into our time to kill, just looking at with no armor plates, the DMR-14 is obviously going to be killing faster at 150 milliseconds. And then when we have a look at three armor plates, the DMR-14's time to kill is 600 milliseconds, which doesn't really stand out in Warzone. If you're going for body shots, the DMR really isn't that amazing. However, the Type 63, since it takes one less shot to kill against three armor plates, this will kill in 499 milliseconds, which is a very fast time to kill to the body for Warzone. Now, something really interesting about these guns is we can actually boost their fire rate depending on the barrel that we're using. And I'm going to tell you guys right up front, the barrel that I recommend for both of these is going to be the titanium barrel. I've done a bunch of testing with all of the barrels with both of these. It might be tempting to go for the one that gives you boosted damage, but that doesn't actually change the number of shots to kill in many situations. So you're better off going with the titanium barrel. It just gives you the best balance of everything. And with this, the DMR-14's rate of fire is bumped all the way up to 483 rounds per minute, whereas the Type 63 is 422 rounds per minute. And you can really see what that does to our time to kill. Our base time to kill doesn't change all that much. However, our time to kill against three armor plates really changes significantly here with the DMR-14. It's now 497 milliseconds, which is a very fast time to kill in Warzone, and the Type 63 is still faster here at 427 milliseconds. Now it is worth noting here that even though we boost our rate of fire potential with these barrels, not everybody is going to be able to reach that potential with their trigger finger. For many people, 483 rounds per minute is going to be a bit of a struggle to reach, but if you have a good trigger finger, you should be able to reach that fairly consistently. But moving on, let's get into our hip fire. The hip fire is actually a little bit different between these, and as you can see here, the Type 63 is a little bit better than the DMR-14. This isn't a massively important stat for Warzone specifically, especially with these guns, because they should be used more for mid to longer ranges. But just know, the Type 63 has a slight advantage here. Also, something I found very interesting when comparing these two is our idle sway difference. And idle sway is really important for the Cold War guns in Warzone, because we don't have a ton of attachments to reduce our idle sway, like that TAC laser on the Modern Warfare guns. 
But you can see here with the DMR-14, there's definitely a good amount of idle sway. It is moving a decent amount, but it's also moving fairly slowly. Whereas when we look at the Type 63, you can see it immediately speeds up and we've got a much faster idle sway and I believe also a higher magnitude of idle sway. So this is an area where the DMR-14 is the clear winner and this is a big deal for those longer range shots because you want to try and pick off those headshots and when you have a ton of idle sway, it makes it very difficult to do that at longer ranges. Another really important factor here is the amount of recoil we have. So let's just compare the base recoil plots here. Keeping in mind, I'm only firing 10 shots per recoil plot, just because with semi-autos, usually that's about as many shots as you would ever fire in a gunfight. And also, since they have different magazine capacities, I didn't want to fire a full magazine here. But as you can see, with a 10-round recoil plot, they both have pretty much the same total magnitude of recoil. However, with the DMR-14, it keeps a nice straight line upwards with a slight lean to the right, whereas the Type 63 also kicks upward with a slight lean to the right. However, it has a bit more side-to-side -side bounce to it as it kicks upwards. And this means for those really long-range fights, you may find yourself struggling a bit more with the Type 63 compared to the DMR-14, and I would give the edge to the DMR in this particular area. Next up, something really interesting I found while doing my testing with the DMR and the Type 63 is the ranges. It turns out for both of these guns, there doesn't appear to be a damage drop off at all in Warzone. I did my testing all the way out to beyond 250 meters and I couldn't find a damage drop off point at all. Now, perhaps there is a damage drop off at like 300 or 400 meters or something, but even on a stationary target at 250 meters, I was having a hard time consistently hitting the target due to the idle sway and also the bullet velocity. So even if there is an extremely long damage drop off point, you don't have to worry about it because it would be beyond the practical ranges of these guns anyway. So much more importantly, when looking at challenging people at longer ranges, we have bullet velocity. This is a very important stat with these guns because our base bullet velocity is quite slow at right around 500 meters per second for both of these guns. Now I should mention that my testing isn't 100% flawless and there is a margin for error here. So perhaps they are slightly different, but that difference in the vast majority of gunfights you find yourself in is completely negligible between these two. The bullets are still gonna be landing on the same frame almost every single time, unless you happen to be trying to shoot somebody at like 600 meters or even farther away than that. Now luckily with both of these, the titanium barrel that I recommended earlier, this does boost our bullet velocity quite noticeably up to around 820 meters per second for both of these guns. So that's another huge reason that you definitely want to be using that titanium barrel if you're using either one of these tactical rifles. But finally, just a small handful of other stats that I wanted to share here. We've got our aim down sight time, which is a little bit faster with the Type 63. Sprint out time, which is very noticeably faster with the Type 63. It's actually a bit slow with the DMR. Magazine capacity, once again, Type 63 has the edge here. And then our reload add time, we also see the Type 63 reloading faster than the DMR-14. So in many ways, the Type 63 keeps gaining the edge over the DMR-14. And if you're just looking at it on paper, and if you combine all the numbers from this video, it actually kind of looks like the Type 63 is better than the DMR-14. However, it doesn't take into account the style of play where these guns actually excel, which is more so picking people off at mid to longer ranges. These aren't really designed for close range fights. And that's where most of the advantages end up coming from when using the Type 63. When we actually start comparing them with the mindset of challenging people at mid to longer ranges, the DMR-14 ends up being a pretty clear winner here because things like our idle sway, that is an extremely important stat and the DMR-14 is very noticeably better in that area. Also, we do get a higher fire rate potential, so it's more forgiving in that sense. And therefore, when comparing these two, I don't think any of you would be surprised for me to say that the DMR-14 is the superior gun for Warzone. Having said that though, the Type 63 is still an excellent option. I wouldn't call it a bad gun by any means. It's just that the DMR-14 is better at excelling where these guns are designed to excel. And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for the comparison of these two semi-auto tactical rifles in Warzone. And of course, I'd like to hear in the comment section below, which one of these guns do you think is better? I have a feeling most of you guys are gonna agree with me, but is there anybody out there that disagrees and thinks the Type 63 is a better gun? And if so, please let me know why. I'm really curious to see that. Now at this point, it's looking like the next episode is gonna be on the burst rifle. So I'm gonna compare the M16 and the AUG. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have missed the first episode of this, I actually compared all of the assault rifles in one episode. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description down below.
If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.